more progress is being made on our crossband repeater project. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. Well, recently, uh, Mike, KD6FTR, and our club president, Don, AC4DM, got together for what we call an impromptu workday. That's an extra workday beyond the two primary ones our club has, where we get together and do work and maintenance at our main uh, repeater sites. But this is just whenever we have extra projects and things that we need to just simply put some time and labor into. And so, of course, recently we've been working on the crossband repeater kits that we are uh, putting together for club use and uh, for a, a big uh, rally that we uh, help provide communications for every year. But uh, we can look at using these kits for other kinds of events as well. Once we get these built, they'll just be part of the club assets that we can use. So we're putting together seven of these kits uh, using uh, very, very similar components as, as much as possible. And they'll be uh, documented and pre-configured. So they'll be easy to deploy for crossband repeater type work. So Mike and Don got together a couple days ago and uh, we've got uh, all the radios and things ready to go. So they started doing the programming for the radios. We have three of these kits that are now done. You can see they were doing some labeling of the kit components for those. We've got two more of the seven that are getting pretty close. Uh, I don't know, maybe a good 70, 80%, maybe more. And the final two out of the seven are, uh, they're over halfway. They're probably 60%. Or somewhere in there so we're getting in pretty good shape you know it just takes some time and whenever uh, one or two of us members have a, a day off or something uh, we'll just say hey folks uh, we're gonna have an impromptu work day and go over to headquarters and uh, spend a couple of hours working on you know, whatever the project is sometimes we're painting a, a trailer uh, that we use for something we have our emergency communications trailer we're also putting together a support trailer for that and we still have a little bit of work on uh, what we call MCOM Junior. Uh, but right now we're working on these crossband repeaters. So Mike and Don got together uh, the other day and worked on the programming. So we have seven of these kits. There's two radios uh, for each one. So we had 14 radios to program. And so what they were doing is each one of the kits is going to be labeled one through seven. And they're all going to have a uh, location uh, as far as the McCreary County Gravel Rally that we have uh, provided communications for and done videos on the last couple of years. And, of course, that will be coming back for uh, 2024 uh, in the spring. Uh, six of these will be meant for active utilization, and uh, one of these is being built up purely as a spare unit. So they're programming each one of these for its location in the areas where we're going to be, uh, where they hold the race. But they're also going to be putting in additional information so that any one of these kits can, could be uh, really set up and deployed anywhere uh, that we might need it uh, for, for really sort of any kind of a situation. Uh, because uh, we, we expect and plan on using some of these for just other things throughout the year beyond the, the rally. Uh, so they'll have their, uh, their default programming for their position for the rally, but then... They'll have all the rest of the programming so that they can easily be switched over and could be deployed again at, at any position uh, on the, uh, the, the raceways um, for the rally. And then, of course, we'll have that spare unit and it'll be fully programmed as well. So uh, they just spent some time the other day, of course, as is almost always true, far, far easier to program these kinds of things when you can use uh, programming software and a cable. Uh, so, of course, they were uh, doing that and uh, took a little bit of time to get everything set up and figured out and programmed. But now all the radios are programmed and they're ready to go. So that's what uh, Mike and Don worked on uh, the other day. Uh, well, then I uh, had some time off. And so I went down and uh, Mike was available again. And so uh, Mike and Don and myself got together and uh, spent a few hours working on something that's uh, a little more tedious <laughs> in nature. Although I'm sure some folks find working on computers are somewhat tedious, but uh, Mike and I, are, I both have experience in the IT world, so uh, we're kind of used to it, and Don has is, is used computers uh, most of his life as well. 
Uh, but the, the next thing we needed to work on, we had four of these kits, which again are not complete yet. Uh, and we needed some specialized cables for them. Uh, these, these radios, these ICOM radios are well known and can be used for crossband repeater type work. Uh, the people have, uh, have set these up for, uh, really for decades, uh, for this kind of, kind of utilization. Uh, these are commercial radios, typically out of uh, police and, and, and emergency response and stuff. They're mobile radios. They're designed with uh, heavy-duty cycles in mind and uh, heavy-duty heat sinks and things like that. So they work very well, and they are set up to where it's not very difficult to use a pair of them and set them up in a crossband repeater fashion. Uh, so the issue, uh, Don has accumulated the documentation for, for this uh, the special cabling required and so forth over the years. Well, the main issue is the special pigtails, the special cables that you need to install into each one of the radios. And then there's going to be really what amounts to a pass-through nine-pin cable just to connect the two. Those special pigtails, uh, you can see some of the, uh, the documentation here, uh, you know, it's not just something that you can go to, uh, you know, to Walmart <laughs> uh, or, or Amazon and, uh, and buy it off the shelf. Uh, they've, it's always been a little bit, uh, kind of, I, I guess, tough to find the cables, um, because, uh, there have been, been folks that have manufactured them. I use the term manufacturing kind of loosely there, I think, uh, in small numbers. Uh, and so you do occasionally find the cables you need. They're not always built correctly, to be honest. Uh, there's been one or two that we've purchased off eBay or someplace, um, and they're not inexpensive. I think they, they run $90 or, or something. They're, they're not cheap. Of course, they are a bit time and labor intensive to make. Uh, we've purchased one or two and they, they weren't pinned out correctly. You know, you kind of take your chance with that. I'm sure it was a total accident, but, uh, but they ended up not being usable as, as they were. Well, we needed, uh, uh, eight more, eight more of these, uh, of these cables. So Don uh, spent some time and accumulated all the, the wiring and, and parts and things we were going to need to to just go ahead and make some of our own cables. Um, uh, we It might have taken us forever <laughs> to find nine of these on eBay, um, and it would have been very expensive, especially if, they, if they're, you know, 90 bucks a piece or whatever he paid for the last one. And occasionally they don't work. So we just kind of bit the bullet and he acquired all the pieces and parts. Uh, this was a radio that had a pigtail pre-installed and we were kind of crossing our fingers that it was set up for the crossband function. But sadly, no, <laughs> this was set up for something completely different. In fact, it, it was hand soldered straight to the board and they weren't using all the pins and stuff. It was, it was some other uh, special functionality that they had set up. So it wasn't going to do us any good. So we just cut it and got it out of the way. So we needed eight of these. Um, so again, uh, Mike and Don and I, we got together and sort of set up a bit of an assembly line. We got all our pieces, parts uh, ready. Don had accumulated everything. And we just took some time and we started building these cables. Uh, and so Don was uh, soldering the, uh, the pins on, following the diagrams that he's accumulated and built up. And, uh, and Mike was doing some of the assembly and, uh, and I was uh, uh, filming and, and so forth so that we could help document you know, this kind of work uh, and just kind of show what is possible. Uh, you know, these are used radios, but again, they're commercial, you know, quality. They're, they're not sort of regular ham amateur radio quality. Not that, you know, all these folks don't make good radios. Uh, obviously, ICOM is known, uh, but these are a little extra heavy duty, duty because they were meant for the commercial market for police cars and, and other emergency vehicles. So, uh, they do work really well in this in this role. Uh, again, it's documented that you can uh, use these kinds of cables and turn them into crossband repeaters. So uh, we did that. We just sat down. It's been a few hours and started working on these cables. And um, this will get us uh, another good step forward. It's it's a bit tedious work, but it was just something that was necessary for the project. But now that um, you know that these are built, this is a kind of a big step to help us start getting. Uh, and finishing up the project. Again, three of them are totally done. Two more are pretty close, but needed these cables. Um, and then two more are, are fairly close. They're over halfway somewhere, I would guess. Uh, and so that's going to let us uh, you know, begin to, to see the light at the end of the tunnel and you know, start to, to finish up uh, you know, this project. 
We've got plenty of other things we need and want to work on, but this is a big one. Even though the race isn't until the spring, uh, you know, you can't, uh, you can't drag your feet. Uh, this is stuff that takes time and we want to get it done and be prepared for that race coming up. So that'll finish this video up. We're going to continue documenting the process of putting these kits together and take you folks along with us. But that'll do it for now. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We'll see you folks in the next video, 73.